But are ministers feared today? Do you see ministers being feared today? Wilt thou not fear? What does it say? Wilt thou not fear? These are ministers attending to this very thing. Amen? And God has avengers in this hour. God has those in this hour that come as ministers of righteousness and they come with power. They come with authority. And just because there are stubborn, unruly, and evil men, unreasonable men, does not mean that they don't come in power. And the scripture says, will you not fear? They don't bear the sword in vain. I tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, you may not consider the sword that Brother Joseph bears to be powerful. But if you could only understand just how powerful the sword really is, the truth will make you free. Jesus came to set the captives free. Now, we're not in the hour where the sword is destroying, where the sword is devouring. But that hour is coming. When those ministers will come back with Jesus on white horses with swords drawn and we will execute judgment and there will be power demonstrated and we will annihilate our enemies if they do not surrender. But this is not the time. We're in the age of grace. We're in the dispensation of grace. We're in the time of grace. And even though we bear the sword, it's not to destroy men. Jesus didn't come to destroy men. He came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So we are in the time now where the sword would bring life, where the sword would bring deliverance, where the sword of the word of the Lord would bring deliverance and wholeness and and, and help. But there's an hour coming when the sword will come to devour and will come to destroy. Jesus said, think not that I've come to bring peace on earth. I've not come to bring peace. I've come to bring a sword and division. Now the sword today is not at its full potential. The sword, the sword, the word of the Lord is not at its full potential. But that doesn't mean that we're not growing. That does not mean that the word of God is not growing within us. And that the spirit of the Lord is not, uh, the measure of the spirit is not increasing within uh, the believer. The sword of the Lord, folks, is the word of God. And the word of God will meet its mark. You can be assured of that. The word of God will overcome the word of the devil. God will have the final word. He always has the final word. Hallelujah. This is coming a day very soon when the Bible says every mouth will be stopped. The whole world will become guilty before God. There's an hour coming when we see the, the rich and we see the kings of the earth and the rulers and the and the in the young and the old, and we see the, the the strong and the weak, and we see everybody crying out for the rocks, fall on us and hide us from him who sits upon his throne. For the day of his wrath, the wrath of the Lamb is come. That's not a far off people. That's not a far off. So in the midst of this letter, Paul is uh writing here to us and he's really writing it to them back there he's writing it to the Thessalonians but it's a letter for us today too because it's God's word it's God's wisdom and in the midst of this letter Paul says and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming 
Isn't it interesting that just a few days ago, it might have been yesterday, that I just shared a message with you all about the brightness of the Lord's coming. And now the Holy Spirit is leading us in the same chapter, just a few verses from that verse. Amen. And God is giving us more. He's giving us more measure. He's giving us more truth. He's giving us more understanding. He's giving more enlightenment. Because there is a, an in increase, folks. Not everybody's receiving that increase. Not everybody's growing in measure to the stature of the fullness of Christ. But there are some in this hour that are growing measure to measure to measure to the fullness and the stature of Christ that are not bearing the sword in vain. I believe with all my heart that God has real, true ministers on this earth. God has real officers. He has real ministers that know their position. We read in the book of Joel that they will not break their ranks that they will not thrust against one another. They know their position. They know their place. And the scripture says that all faces shall gather blackness when these ministers march. Folks, God is raising up an army. But you're not going to be in that army if you're not growing in the Lord. If you're not growing in the wisdom of if you're not growing in the knowledge, if you're not growing in the understanding, if you're not growing in the uh, virtue of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be in this army. Just like the Lord said to Gideon, only keep the 300, let all the others go home. God is choosing out of his people in this hour a great and exceeding army. Not everybody's going to be in that army. God is raising up a Gideon-like army in this hour that are going to go forth in power, people, in power. And we read about this in the book of Joel. What a mighty, mighty, powerful army that God Almighty is raising up. Amen? And so in this broadcast, we blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. It is nigh at hand. Just yesterday or the day before I preached a message on this broadcast entitled the day of the Lord. One day it shall be one day known to the Lord. Amen. Do you remember me preaching that message to you? about how it shall not be day nor night, but in the evening time there shall be light. That's what this is talking about. The day of the Lord, folks. A day of darkness. It's day, but yet it's dark. A gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people, a strong, there hath not been ever the like. Neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. As a horseman, so shall they run. Now understand, this is not flesh and blood. This army is not flesh and blood here. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall walk, march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. 
They shall walk everyone on his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Did you hear that? When they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded because they're not in a flesh and blood body anymore. You must understand they're now in a glorified body, folks. They're walking and marching in a glorified body, just like Jesus Christ. After his resurrection, God is raising up an army that's going to be resurrected by the power of God and the world's going to consider them to be aliens or gods from another world but we're not we're the redeemed of the Lord we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb and we're being glorified by the Spirit of Almighty God it's not by might it's not by power but it's by my Spirit saith the Lord of hosts They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall withdraw their shining. And it says here, even the stars shall withdraw their shining. So it can't be what what Hagee's talking about. Because it says here, even the stars are going to withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? God is raising up an army. There's not a devil in hell that can stop this army. The devil himself can't stop this army, much less men. All the weaponry, all the nuclear, uh, all your mass, it doesn't matter what it is, all your mass destruction, all everything you can throw at this man-child overcoming company, you can't stop them. They're unstoppable. The world today would like to develop a super soldier. They can't. They can't. But God can. And God is. Oh yeah. God is. Praise God. It's through the blood of the Lamb. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. God has chose the foolishness of preaching to save those that are lost. Amen. That's God's choice. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. I love that. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. What more needs to be said about that? Praise God. Hallelujah. God is raising up an end time army of deliverance. Not everybody will be delivered. But there will be those that will be delivered. Thank God for those that do turn. Listen to what it says in verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. And listen to what it says here. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he's gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. There is not an army on the face of the earth with all their weaponry, with all their supersonic, all their jets, all their helicopters, all their drones, all their weapons of mass destruction cannot stop this army that is going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have one objective. They have one uh, purpose on this earth. They have one uh, mission to complete on this earth, and that is to preach the gospel in all the world. Then the end will come. God is raising up an end-time army that is going to preach the gospel without fear. No man shall stand before them. The gospel, the truth, is going to be preached. And most will scratch their heads. Even the church will scratch their heads saying, What new message is this? 
It's not a new message. It's the message that you used to believe. It's the message you used to live. It's the message you used to believe. You don't believe it anymore. You don't go to Jesus for healing anymore. You don't go to Jesus when you need deliverance. You go to man now. You go to the doctors. You go to the hospitals. You don't turn to Jesus when you're sick in your body anymore. You're the one that left the faith. You're the one that walked away from Jesus. Jesus is still in the business. Jesus is still setting the people free. Jesus